Hey everyone, this is really important and I really just wanted to get it out there, which is why I'm still wearing pajamas and it's why I've just written it and I'm just gonna read it to you. Um, so yesterday in France, uh, as you probably heard, the temperature hit almost 46 degrees Celsius. That's almost 115 degrees Fahrenheit. It's almost two degrees higher than the highest temperature ever recorded in France before, ever. Record keepers in Germany say this week was the hottest Europe has been in at least 500 years. Meanwhile, in Paris, police have been spraying tear gas into the eyes of peaceful climate change protesters. The world is heating up. What do you think? Is this an emergency? I mean, it's human nature to downplay risks, to assume that the best possible outcome has a good chance of occurring. That's why we do things like playing the lottery and that's why people start new businesses, even though over 90% of new businesses fail. No one wants to think that there's a big chance of climate change being this accelerating catastrophe that could wipe us all out. But the science is clear. There's a very real chance that it could. Greenhouse gases heat up the world, and there are giant ice fields containing loads of methane, a very potent greenhouse gas, that are rapidly melting, releasing even more greenhouse gases, heating the world up even more, melting even more methane containing ice. No one knows how quickly things like this could accelerate. To make matters worse with the ice, ice is white and nice and shiny and so it reflects the heat of the sun until it's gone. And then the dark surfaces, like ice-free land and deep water underneath it, they absorb the heat of the sun. And that too makes it even hotter. And as the world heats up and the concentration of CO2 in the air rises, you know that the oceans acidify and they warm too. And the phytoplankton that plays such a primary role in removing CO2 from the air and making the oxygen we breathe start to die off. Who knows if enough of them will adapt quickly enough to satisfy our needs? We're social creatures, right? We don't act as if there's an emergency if no one around us is acting like there's an emergency. We like to assume that someone, somewhere, has got everything under control. But there's no one, anywhere, with everything under control. So here we are. The science is very clear on these three things. One, the climate's changing and the change is accelerating. Two, the consequences of climate change are proving increasingly dangerous for life on Earth. There are now over a million species on the brink of extinction. And three, we have no idea how much worse things will get or how soon. We, we really have to stop asking how much time do we have left as if trying to calculate how much longer we can afford to delay because the truth is that nobody knows for sure how much time we have. Anyone who says otherwise is, is guessing. Likewise, we have to stop asking how much worse it's going to be when things get one, two or three degrees C warmer, as if trying to calculate how much of a risk we're taking as we delay, because again, nobody knows for sure how much worse things will get. All we know is that there's a very real chance that we're heading towards total calamity, and all around us, the world is gambling on it, hoping that it's not going to be that bad. How comfortable can we be with that kind of gamble? Our leaders are playing a game, they're treating climate change with as low a priority as they can because they know that mobilising resources to combat it is expensive and it's bad for business as usual. Meanwhile, scientists and non-scientists the world over are trying to sound the alarm, saying that our burning of fossil fuels, creation of concrete, consumption of beef and so on are putting the world under enormous stress. Our leaders are delaying for as long as they can. For what? until something too big to ignore happens, the, the more we wait, the more plausible it becomes that our actions will be too little too late. And the older generation will have betrayed not just the younger generations, but every younger generation to come. It's possible. So what do we do? How do we ensure that our governments get a sign that they can't ignore now, before it might be too late? Rise up, take to the streets, join every climate protest, Every one needs to be bigger and bigger than the last and always peaceful. We're doing this in the interest of life, all life on earth. Protesting for action on climate change is one of the most beautiful things you can possibly do in this world. From our governments, we need to demand a green revolution. It should be illegal for any business to significantly contribute to climate change in any jurisdiction. And from ourselves, we need to ask more too. 
If you love people, compassionately convince them to stop eating beef, to cut down on plastic, to pay that bit extra for green electricity. And if you're really smart, and you're still working in a job that prioritises making money over protecting this struggling planet, then you have to wake up. It's not smart anymore to just earn a lot of money. Your planet is in serious trouble. So many of the well-paid jobs in the world are directly or indirectly making things worse. This is a very real battle, and the hordes are genuinely surrounding us. We need smart and compassionate people on the front line as researchers, as campaigners, as strategists. The world needs you so much. We evolved brains to help us to survive and it's time to use them together. Otherwise we really might not survive. It took 200,000 years for our population to reach 4 billion. It took just 50 years for it to grow by almost another 4 billion. Humanity is very big now and we're far too big to be willfully blind to the biggest problem we've ever faced. The world is changing very, very quickly. And I don't want things to change. I, I, I quite like my life the way that it is. And it would be nice to bury my head in the sand, but change is coming whether we like it or not. It's a mathematical certainty that by burning ever more fossil fuels on a fundamentally limited planet, we are heading for a major systemic crash. Anyone who thinks otherwise is living in a total fantasy. Things are gonna to have to change enormously, whether we like it or not. The only thing that matters is whether we wait until that change happens to us, brutally and uncontrollably, or if we face it now with courage and wisdom. Thanks for listening.